And I want to go to bonds uh, right now, Seth, in the, in the idea of yield, and you were talking with us on the break about the idea of the massive trap we're in with a price to perfection bond market. Discuss that. Right. So people are rightly concerned about risk in today's environment. And all you have to do is open the newspaper or watch your Bloomberg screen to see that there are lots of risks that could erupt and no one's going to forecast them accurately. So their reaction to that is to seek safety. And the result has been this paradoxical safety bubble where the things that people think are safe have gotten so expensive that they're actually risky now. So that applies to the bond market in general, where yields are really, really low by any normal stretch. And actually, as a result of that, many issuers, as we were discussing earlier, have issued longer and longer term bonds, for example, Italy issuing 50 year bonds, which makes bond indices even more interest rate sensitive than they used to be. So as you're right. pointing out, <clears throat> everything in the bond market right. is priced to perfection. I want to go with what's on my radar, which is professional money, like what AB does, Alliance, you know, way back in the merger with Sanford Bernstein years ago. When we look at pension money and investment money, they have a mandate to meet those obligations, which means their mandate is to go out in duration. They are exposed, aren't they? They are, and the theory is that their liabilities will shrink if interest rates go up, so it's okay if their assets held in bonds shrink too. We're not so sure that that it's will actually- It's a second order condition. And it, yeah. it, it's not as easy as people think to match your liabilities. But you're right, there are some institutions that think of themselves as not having risk if they take on that duration exposure. But what we would say is that many of the most investors are actually trying to get safety mm. in duration, and that, actually, that is not likely to work out well. It's also spreading to the stock market, because more and more of the stock market is populated with stocks that have bond-like characteristics. Mm. And that, that, that's actually another second order effect. Yeah. The safe stocks are the ones that have more yield and are priced based on their yield. And they've gotten very expensive. They're now at about an 18% premium to the market as a whole. They right. usually trade at almost a 10% discount. And Guy, that would include AT&T with a 5% dividend. Even without the dividend growth there, that's a perfect example of what Dr. Masters is talking about. Yeah, to pick up on that point, Seth, but a lot of corporates are issuing longer duration bonds. Does, does that provide some degree of safety here? No, I think it's exactly the opposite. Think about what's happening. Corporates, and this is rational, you would want to do this if you were the CFO of a, or treasurer of a company, are locking in these lower interest rates for longer. What that means is that corporate bond indices have become longer duration. In other words, more sensitive to changes in interest rates. Now the duration of the typical um, broad global bond indices is about seven and a half years, which means a 1% rise in interest rates would cause a 7.5% decline in global bond indices. Now, nobody's worried about that risk right now, but it does mean that we are very finely tuned, and we would say it's a good time not to take on more duration risk. If anything, you want to be taking on less. So you don't want to be just following where the index is driving you in the bond world. And the same thing is happening in the stock world, too, because the kinds of stocks that have done well have been those that have more bond-like characteristics, given this assumption that that makes them safer. We think that the same risks exist there, too.